This is Family Time 119. We're talking about social pressures. This falls under our responsible decision making, SEL competency. We have to recognize that we're impacted by outside forces. It goes back to the old nature versus nurture debate. Are we more the product of our genetics? Of what's naturally built into us because we all have our own individual interests and desires, our own passions. We, we have our own capacities and skills in different areas. But we're also the product of our environment, all of us. The truth is it's a little bit nature and a little bit nurtured. We're all impacted by our environments. An easy way to look at this or to recognize the way that we're all impacted by social pressures is to look at things like trends. Look at things like styles. You can go and grab an old yearbook from the early 2000s and find me with spiked hair and frosted tips. And looking back, it seems funny. It looks ridiculous. That tends to be every generation. It was a real style at the time. I wasn't the only one doing it. It was fairly popular. And we look back and see those little things, and why would people do their hair that way, or why would they wear their clothes that way? But it seemed normal. It was the social pressures. It was the environment at that time. And that impacts all of us. Even if we make a concerted effort to go the opposite direction of a certain trend or a certain style, we're still reacting to that thing. We're consciously trying to go a different direction from what is popular, what is mainstream. I see that all the time now. In the social media world we live in, of TikTok and Instagram, there's so many trends that come and go so quickly. I see it all the time in class, where it's the end of class and students all grab your cell phones again and somebody's doing some dance that they're trying to record that's the new trend. Or the taking pictures and turning it and taking a picture. I don't even really know what's going on there. I'm just trained enough. I have enough social programming that when you turn the camera on me, I make a face. I've been in how many TikTok trend dances and stuff. I don't even know what they are. Those things come and go so quickly now because there's so much information, so much connectedness out there. So those things do impact. And some of those things are fun and, and pretty novel and don't really, don't really affect our lives positively or negatively. But there's a lot of other social pressures that impact the decisions we make. For better or for worse. When we say things like social pressure or peer pressure, We often think of that in a negative way. We sort of assign a negative connotation to something like a social pressure. Just the word pressure has sort of a negative connotation. But it doesn't have to be. I've certainly been impacted by a lot of positive social pressures in my life from my family, my parents having high expectations and behaving a certain way and that impacted me, to teams that I've been on, to being in the school that we go to. One of the biggest things to happen to me, most important things that happened to me in my life was my family moving to St. Ansgar. Because of the environment there, because of the culture, I was positively impacted. To be involved in activities I wouldn't have otherwise been involved in, to behave a certain way, that was a good thing. That's an example of a positive social pressure. 
you can still see those things all around our school with how we expect people to behave, with how our, with the standards that we set for each other. That's a positive social pressure. But there are a lot of potentially negative social pressures as well. And that's especially true when we're younger. That's not a negative thing. When we're young, we're trying to find our place in the world. And we do that by examining the things around us. And we decide what is right and what's wrong based on what we're seeing. And I'm talking at a real young age. That's how we determine how we should behave. Eventually, we want to continue on that path to self-actualization to get as close to that as we can. And that requires us, at some point in our lives, often at the point that a lot of you are at, that middle school, high school level, we have to start asking questions about the things in our environment that have impacted us and continue to impact us. We have to ask questions about the people we surround ourselves with if those people are elevating us or if they're holding us back in some way. And hopefully, in the best cases, we can be a positive example, use positive social pressures to elevate those around us. And sometimes, and it's very difficult, we have to recognize that some things in our lives, maybe even some people in our lives, are having a negative impact. They're pressuring us in a negative way, intentionally or unintentionally. And sometimes we have to separate ourselves from those negative pressures. But it is a, it's important to understand that so many things in life are constructs. And there are so many people who are all too happy to tell us what we should think, what we should believe, how we should dress, what we should do with our lives. And sometimes that comes from a very positive place, from people who care about us and want what's best for us. And sometimes it comes from people who or maybe not even intentionally trying to hold us back, but want us to fit a certain mold because it makes them more comfortable. Because they get something out of the current relationship and they don't want to lose that. And the more that we can recognize how those pressures impact us and how the constructs around us impact our behavior, the more we can make decisions for ourselves, make responsible decisions that are going to be the most beneficial for ourselves. And that's not to say we always have to go against things that impact us. We don't always have to go against the pressure. We can recognize those positive pressures and, and lean into them. And use those things. Let them be the wind in our sails so we're not always having to row. On the flip side, if we can recognize the things that have a negative impact on us, we can start to distance ourselves from those things or work to change them. That's what I want you to do this week. I want you to think of some social pressure, positive or negative, and how that pressure impacts your life. The decisions that you make specifically, but also 
how you feel. Think about that. Consider the pressures in our lives. Consider the things that impact us, often subconsciously. That helps free us from those pressures and make decisions for ourselves. Much love.